Hello, and welcome to the Slaying It with Shauna podcast. Keep slaying it. If you're looking for someone who's raw, unfiltered, and authentic, you've come to the right place. And now, let's get started with your host, Shauna Martinez. Keep slaying it. Hey everyone, Shauna Martinez here, and I got my sidekick. Hi, Jordan here. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about, uh, sometimes we have a hard time coming up with topics, so um, today we decided to talk about what kind of consumes us, which is owning a business mm-hmm. and raising a family. So I hope a lot of you can relate out there. Uh, so I have a couple of uh, ideas that has worked for us, um, but it's not easy. So first of all, it's not easy to run a business and own a business anyways. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. Mm-hmm. It's stressful. It's like a whole different kind of stressful because you are your own boss. If you don't work, you don't yeah. make money, you don't provide. Outside looking in, it looks easy, but it's definitely Yeah. I get people who contact me all the time who are like, well, I want to get into real estate. I want to run my, I want to have my own business. And then when they start seeing everything that it takes to do what we do at the mm-hmm. level that we do it, and I'm not saying we're even at the best because there's so much more room to improve, which we're always working on. Um, it's a lot, you guys. Yes, a lot. Even I didn't think that it was this much. And it's ever evolving. Like even today she came in and I said, we've, we've decided to make some changes. I did joke around and tell her, <laughs> today's your last day. Yeah, not cool. But and she, she got was, my intention. She's like, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> you got my intention now. Um, no, never. Um, but, you know, things do change all the time. So if you're not, um, especially if you want to grow, because in the because business is changing so much. The world is changing so much right now. We have everything going on with COVID. We have businesses that are starting to reopen here in the Dallas area. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, don't follow me, you should, but I'm uh, in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area. Um, and there's a lot of businesses that are hurting right now, a lot of small businesses, and I'm a small business. So any business that um, re- that generates um, 10 million and under in uh, revenue, um, you're considered a small business. And so that's us. And um, so, you know, I know a lot of people are hurting. They're getting the, the, the PPP loans, which is the pay- payroll protection loans, things like that. We've been very fortunate, but I wouldn't say it's luck. Like we work really hard. And so I'm very hard on myself as far as doing what I need to do every single day. Our team's always on point doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I think that's why we've been so successful. That and just being consistent. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and Jordan's owned a business before. So she's going to have some stuff to say <laughs> on this topic. She doesn't have kids yet. She has fur babies, but she doesn't have kids. But she sees us and she helps us with ours. And our, our kids absolutely love Jordan. Um, they, they act like she's here to entertain them. And sometimes we have to be like, <laughs> no. He's like, oh, I'm still working. <laughs> When she's done, she can come and and play with you and straighten your hair or whatever it is that you're (laughs) wanting her to do for the day or ride bikes. She she went uh, and rode my kids' ripsticks too. Yeah, that's not for me. I can't do it either to be young. (laughs) Yeah. And she's young. So we were talking about this yesterday. She's actually the same age that I was when I had my daughter, my first child. I couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't. (laughs) So, and then 10 years later, try having another one, a 10 year age gap. First of all, it was the most miserable experience of my life being pregnant at the age of 34. But Silas is the best. Oh my God. I baked him so good. Like my husband and I always talk about that. <laughs> like he may have come out looking like my husband, but he, I baked that kid so good. Like he's, I would have had two of him if I could have. Yeah. I told her to make another one so I could have one. <laughs> you know, the odds are against us and we'll end up having one that's not like him and then it will be hell to pay. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, so we have four kids, count them four, and uh, there are, uh, we have a two and a half year, <laughs> we have a two and a half year old, he'll be three in August, and then we have three daughters that are uh, 12 and 13. We're a blended family, so for those of you who don't know and don't follow me, you should, uh, but we're a blended family, so uh, his, his and ours and, and, and mine and our, well, ours, I guess, is mine and ours. Um, and then, uh, so what I found is it's very hard to balance, so like, the first, so I, I've been a full-time real estate agent almost like going on two and a half years, I think if I do the math and uh, I had a license for six years. Um, and I will say that the first two, first year and a half that I got in full-time, I, I had left a, a corporate job, um, very good one. Um, and most people don't leave those kind of jobs to go pursue their own, uh, you know, mm-hmm. businesses and stuff, especially when 87% of people fail in the first five years in this business. 
eighty seven percent. So yeah, that means only thirteen percent. <laughs> yeah, but she's gonna she's already gonna be way ahead of everybody else because one, she gets to be with us mm -hmm. and we're gonna definitely set her up for success. She knows what it takes. It's not rocket science. Like nothing is rocket science. It's commitment, it's consistency. Determination. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's things that you cannot go out like not everybody has it. Right. Like they see the money that can be made in real estate and there is like more people got rich in real estate than any other business during the recession, uh, the housing market crisis back in 2007 to 2009. Like more millionaires were made than ever. Right. And it was all because of real estate. So it's like, this is a great business. I would say this is one of the best times to be in the business. Um, the people who are not gonna be dedicated, they're gonna be weeded out real quick. Right. Like that's what I found out is that you, the people who are just kind of like, I wouldn't even say part-time because I was a part-time agent for like three years and I did as much production as some most, actually more than most full-time agents. And ha being here in our MLS, we have over 20,000 agents and in the first two years of being a full-time agent, I'm in the top 2%. So I think that's, yeah. And it has nothing to do with like, I'm better than anybody else. It's just that, and I don't even know a lot of things that I probably should know, but I, I'm a very self-sufficient person. I, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And I don't just like my dad gave me really good advice when I was younger. I remember, I think I was probably in middle school, maybe seventh, eighth grade. And I remember my dad said, if you're going to do something, don't half ass it. Oh gosh. Yeah. Like either do it or don't do it. And so mm -hmm. I just remember that always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't matter anything I've ever done. I've always excelled at it and not because I'm better at than anything than anybody else. It's just that I always try really hard. Mm -hmm. You're always learning about new things. Yes. You're, you're striving to be better. So that's, yeah. that's what makes you better. I think that's important, especially when you own your own business, because if you are, and somebody else told me this too, like I, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, first of all, I would say. I'm mm -hmm. constantly amazed and surrounded by people who are way more intelligent than I am. Um, and so I learn from those people. And this is another thing is like, I don't get intimidated by other people. I just, I'll reach out and ask people. Like even yesterday, one of the biggest eight, one of the number, I think the t number one team or uh, agent in San Diego, uh, Mark Patson, shout, shout out to you. But I reached out to him uh, in a Facebook Messenger last night. I was asking him a couple questions and he popped back, gave me some answers. And then this morning it's like, okay, we're going a different direction. And I think it's important that you learn from people who are doing it better than you. So if you're, mm -hmm. so it goes back to my thing is what I heard recently, and it also will stick with me, is that never be the smartest person in the room. Yes. Be the least smart person in the room and you will always do okay. Yeah. Because you need to surround yourself with people who make you grow. Mm -hmm. And you don't grow I when people that. are like-minded with you or less-minded than you. Mm -hmm. However you want to take that. Like, I just yes. want... I know I know a lot of great people who are in this business and other businesses as well. And it's not just like real estate really. Like, you can take things from other people and other businesses. Mm -hmm. I take things from, like, things I see on TV or commercials. Like, I'll see, oh, like... For instance, I was getting my nails done back when we were allowed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the best experience I ever had, and this makes a big difference because you, there's like a nail salon every other business over here in this area. You, there's like 10 on the same street. So what sets them apart? Well, the customer service is what sets them apart. Mm -hmm. Same thing with agents. Everybody knows a real estate agent, but it's the customer service and the experience that sets you apart from other people. And other people will go to bat for you if you give them a good experience. Well, this is a prime example of that. So I went and got my nails done and I, like I always do every two weeks, struggling right now. I have no nails on right now. Um, and, uh, but you know, they did, they do a great job. These other places did a great job. No, no question. Didn't have any issues. Like they did my nails. Great job. Okay. Paid them left. Two weeks later, I come back, I get them done again. But this time I went to a new nail salon and I was just wowed with the customer service. Like he just kept asking throughout the whole entire time, like, how does that feel? Does that look okay? Like, am mm -hmm. I being too, is it too hard? Am I being too soft? So it's that extra step. Asking just tons of mm -hmm. questions, getting feedback. Mm -hmm. And what I remember is when I left there, I came home and told my husband about it. And the reason why I stuck out is because it's like, we could be using that in our own business. Like we're so focused on like getting things to the end goal. Like, mm -hmm. you know, our goal is to get things sold and get people into their homes or get them moved out of their homes. Like you, but there's a whole process between beginning to end. And it's like, don't forget 
along that way that people need you to be reaching out to them. Like mm -hmm. we do, we have a whole team of people, but they know me, they meet me, build a relationship with me, even though my team helps me. I have a, a whole support system. I would say definitely do that if you own a business. The better support, the, the better you're gonna be able to do because you're only one person. But at the same time, like even if you call them and say, hey, I'm just checking and making sure everything's okay. I know that you know you signed this with our, you signed this document that got sent over, but I just wanna know, did you have any questions? Like I know you're being taken care of on the transaction side, but personally, like how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Can I help with something? And what I noticed is when I started doing that, my clients were like, like whoa. Like nicely surprised. Yeah. I just feel like always going the extra mile is always good. Mm -hmm. So when you do your business really, really well, or you're constantly growing, like you're just like balls to the wall, like especially the first two years. I mean, you're starting from scratch. Like I basically wake up every day thinking I'm unemployed because I am like, I, I have to go and get another deal. I have to make more relationships, get more transactions because I have staff, I have a family, I have, you know, people who are counting on me to show up every day. Mm -hmm. And you know, yesterday was a, was an off day. Like yesterday I didn't, it was, I suffer from anxiety and depression and I don't take any medication for it. So I do CBD oil for it and that helps. And I've been off of it for a while because we got moved and just, you know, life excuses. But yesterday was a really bad day. <laughs> it started out really bad. I woke up, you know, four o'clock in the morning, thought getting ready to go. And it's like one thing can throw me off and the whole day just kind of goes to crap. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was yesterday. So yes, sometimes you do have to take a day off and be like, you're like, just take a self-care day. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my self-care day was staying up in the media room, watching trash TV and taking a nap. I love that. And then I got up at like three o'clock in the afternoon and I brushed my teeth <laughs> and I put on makeup and we went to my in-laws and celebrated my mother-in-law's birthday. So it's like, it doesn't mean you have to have a bad day. It doesn't have to go past that day, but sometimes you do need to take like a time right. out for mm -hmm. yourself, like mentally. So did you feel better when you woke up today? Yes. Like I knew that yesterday was going to be, cause I felt so bad yesterday. Like when I go through those things, I'm like, okay, so today is going to be crap mm -hmm. and I'm just going to let it be crap. Mm -hmm. And then, but I'm not going to let it like tomorrow. The only way it can change is for me to get back up, do what I'm supposed to do with my routine and get going. Like, right. And I didn't get up at four o'clock this morning, but I got up and Jordan showed up all like full face makeup. I'm like, Oh, we're podcasting today. Like, <laughs> Do it. So then I, it forces me to go get dressed, put on makeup. And we talked about that in one of our podcasts is it makes you feel better. And it does. It makes you feel better. Like, mm -hmm. and when it's so much internal dialogue. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I have to try even harder because I, people who meet you are like, man, you just have so much energy. They would never know. I never have energy. And they say, oh, you're so positive. But they would never know that it's like, it's a struggle. Yeah. Because like one little thing can throw me off. Right. I know some people don't understand that, but I know there's a lot of people out there that do. And oh, it's like, I totally understand that. Like one of it my friends uh, who's in Michigan, Heather, um, it, I was talking to her and she's like, I've just been in a funk lately. And you know what I told her? And it's funny because you give people advice that like you would, you need yourself, <laughs> yes. you know, but you would never take it because it's like, that's for somebody else, you know, not for me. Mm -hmm. And so I told her, I'm like, I feel like you just need to give yourself some grace and maybe take a day off. Mm -hmm. And I said today, and this was yesterday when I was having my day, and I said, you know what, today, I haven't even, I didn't get out of my PJs till three. Yeah. I laid around and watched TV and I took a nap. And I was like, and tomorrow I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna do better, but today is, is how it is. Yeah. And she messaged me back and she, you could tell she was just like waiting for someone to give her that confirmation like it was okay for her to have right. an off day. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing is you have to make sure you don't have a lot of off days because again, you're self-employed. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and we're still doing deals. So it's like, I can take a step back. And that's another thing about having a team of people is like, I can take a step back. I text Jordan and said, Hey, I need you to do this for me. Or my husband can do, you know, whatever he needs to do. So it's like, I don't always have to be, it's if not you all me. still or... like sending emails. He probably took a couple calls. So yeah, that's more of your off day. Yeah. My, so when I say I have a day off, it means I'm not showing property or going on appointments. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, I will take phone calls. I will, re there's not a day that I don't return an email or a phone right. call or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And I even got a listing. So like I had somebody call me and say, I need you to come list my house and I need you to find me another place. And it's like, yeah. when you run a business the way you're supposed to, <laughs> those kinds of things happen. You don't have to go out and like, it's not the sweat and blood tears like you do in the first year, or two years or whatever. Of yeah. trying to get business like then you you build up momentum and then it's like okay so then you that gonna coast a little bit so yeah it, it, yeah it's very much like that like I tell her I'm like oh I want to get you know my goal is to get new listing every single week and I'm like wait a second I got three this week and it's like yeah. and I didn't do anything but just show up every day it's like 
it's kind of crazy, but it's very nice to get referral business. It's very nice to get, you know, people who know you and just reach out to you and say, Hey, I want you to come to my house. Like, that's great. Um, but then it's like, what do you do when you have all this business, you have family and you have all these things, your life is, can't just be 100% business. But I will tell you that I'm the world's worst about putting business above everything else. Okay. Like even my kids and my husband are like second. I love my kids. I love my husband, but it's like, and I also escape in business. So like if I'm really yeah. stressed out, like my thing is I just want to work. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to be sitting around stressed out about what's going to happen or not going to happen or whatever. I just feel like all I can do to fix that is to work because one, it takes my mind off of it. And mm -hmm. two, if you work, you're, I mean, they say the luckiest person is the hardest worker. So it's like, you know, there's no luckier person than somebody who's a, a hard worker. And I think that's true. But that's good that you channel it into working hard. Except for when it becomes like the only thing you're giving any attention to. Yeah. Like there have been true. times when like my husband had to sit me down and say, listen, like you have four children. But at least you, you're realizing it. Yes. But that doesn't make me doing any better. So there are some things. So that's yeah. what I wanted to talk about today was there are some things that like I found that work for me and that we do that kind of help with the situation. One, marry somebody who's like super forgiving. Like if they speak a different language than you and they don't understand the, the English you speak, that's probably best. Shout out. He's <laughs> All joking aside, I do have a husband that is pretty much like a saint. I He's walking around here and I know he hears this and sometimes I don't like that because when I get upset with him, then he's like, well, that's not what you said. <laughs> but, you know, like he, he is great. And there are probably times when he was like, anybody else would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. Because there's always so much that you can be with somebody and not get attention. Mm -hmm. And then you go to bed at night and you're too tired. It's like you're tired and you just want to go to sleep and it's like you're not giving him any attention then either. So it's like at what point does somebody feel important to you? Yes. Like how long can somebody keep being with somebody who like constantly puts them on the back burner? Mm -hmm. So what do you do now that you... So before COVID, what I did was, okay, so one of the things is I, I hired a coach. Like as soon as I went full time in real estate, it was like, I didn't know how to go out and get business. I knew how to like do open houses and like get business every once. So I will say that when, one of the things that we started implementing was when we ha didn't have the COVID stuff going on, right. is we committed to, so what... I hired a coach, number one. So then my coach, you know, like, they become like your life coach, really. Like, mm -hmm. not just in real estate, but like, they're, they're they're like problem solvers. Like, they've been through it. They know people who've been through it. Like, they talk to people for a living. They help them build their businesses. Like, they, you basically sit down and say, this is what I see for my life, not just in my business. And they say, okay. And they put together a plan and they say, let's mm -hmm. do it. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I hired a coach that was that was huge for me because not only were they going to teach me how to like build my business and be as successful as I want, but they also said, listen, like you, it's crap. If, if you're, all you're doing is working, like in your, your, in your family life is crap. Like you don't want to get right. to the end of this thing. Your kids be grown up you, and then your husband divorce you. And like you're an empty nester, your kids don't want anything to do with you because you missed out on this, all these, you know, milestones in their life and things like that. So that was kind of like a, an aha moment for me. Cause I'm like, that's true. Like, they basically said, what's the point of being successful if you're, the rest of your life is completely shit. Right. And I'm like, that's true. And so what they say is like, you know, you put, so what I, what I started trying to focus on is if I put as much effort into non-business things, like things that are important, you know, my kids and, and my husband and my family and those kinds of things, like, then it's only going to get better just like my business does. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of things from just learning how to build my business. I put that into my everyday life. So one of the things I learned was you have to take time out. Like yesterday I had to take a time out. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you know, I'm better today. Like I feel much better today. But, um, so what my husband and I started committing to every quarter. So in business, we do things in quarters, like every, you know, so you have four a year, every three months and we take a vacation every quarter. Okay. It doesn't have to That's be like cool. a huge vacation. It doesn't have to be like, Ooh, we're going to this lavish, lavish resort. It could <laughs> yeah. be like a weekend getaway. Mm -hmm. It could be like, I love going to Chicago. So we were supposed to be in Chicago last week. And then of course, you know, we had to cancel our flight and everything. So it's like, and I go away for things like conferences, like, mm -hmm. like you talk about learning and just getting better educated and things like I do, I go to certain conferences. So does that kind of count as your vacations together? Yes. Like we'll do is we'll make it like a long weekend. So like there, the conferences usually start like on Tuesdays and they go like Tuesday through like Thursday or Tuesday through Friday, depending on the conference and what it's about. And then we'll usually go like the, the Friday before. 
Yeah. And then so we'll be there Friday through Sunday or whatever. And then my husband will come home because somebody has to be here with the kids. And he'll fly home. Bless his heart. He has to fly by himself and he hates to fly. But these oh. are the things that we do to like be able to make this happen. And it just allows us to recharge. Yeah. Because sometimes what you do is, I know for us, we get caught up like we're so much about our, even before the business, like we were so caught up in just like being parents. Mm-hmm. So like you lose yourself. So you kind of tend to focus on one thing. Yeah, very and it's much hard so. to spread it out. Well, it's hard for us to focus on each other. Like yeah. it's hard to remember that we also have a marriage and we're married. Mm-hmm. Because especially because you work together. So like that's a, I'm trying to get my husband to come on here and do like a, what it's like to work with your spouse. But I'm afraid of what he'll say. <laughs> because, you know, I don't he, think he'll say anything bad. No, of course not, because he knows better. But <laughs> if he's is he being honest, like you know, like. Let's be honest here. That's what this podcast is all about. It's not just being honest, spreading positivity. And so I'm not trying to be negative about businesses. I love what I do. Obviously, I don't want to do anything else. Like I would much rather be stressed because of my own ambitions and my own dreams than mm-hmm. to be busting my butt, which I was doing before, for somebody who doesn't care, does not value my time, does not value my family, and I'm doing it to make their life better, but my life is going to crap. Like, right. This is so much better. So, like, some of the things that we learn with, the, with like, the first thing is is to take time out and do quarterly trips. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we do more than that. Like, we'll take our kids on a weekend getaway. Like, we have family that live in Arkansas. It's a great area up there. We'll go up there for the weekend. But we make it, like, kind of cool because we rent, like, Airbnbs and stuff. So, it's like a little mini it's vacation. Fun, yeah. So, our kids act like they're, like, celebrities. But they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they've come to uh, ha- grow accustomed to this kind of life. Like, yeah. and we and we don't give our kids presents for Christmas. We give them experiences. So, and I love that. I wish my parents would do that. But it's, I mean, it's super expensive. I yeah. mean, it's expensive if like you want to take a cruise, for instance. Like, I mean, you're looking at a family of six. You're looking at shelling. This is if you don't fly. You're shelling out like six grand for mm-hmm. a cruise. Yeah. But what I found is that you can go on like vacations to go. Mm-hmm. .com or any of those Cheap places. Cheap Caribbean is a good one. But what you can do is you can book it and pay on it. Yes. So like we always booked our stuff a year in advance and then we would pay on it and then by the time the trip came it was paid for and then we would book our next one and we, that's just what we did. So every year all year long we're paying on, mm-hmm. I mean now we could just pay cash for it but it's like, you know, but when yeah. you don't have that kind of money, most people don't, that's a little trick is you can actually book through a travel agent and, and pay in payments. That's a really good idea. And I think it's important. Like, I think, so my husband, so I grew up in a family where we didn't grow up with money, but my parents always took two weeks vacation every year. So it was, Mm -hmm. and so growing up, I learned about vacations and we didn't take lavish vacations. Like we went to the same place every year. We went to Colorado (laughs) last week of June, first week of July. And my parents, I mean, we drove there because my parents couldn't afford to, you know, we didn't have like- Flights for everybody. No, no Mm -hmm. way, no way. It's so expensive. And so, um, you know, like, but it taught me what it was like. And as an adult, I wish I had enjoyed, I wish I had appreciated it more as a child. Mm -hmm. I just hated it because like all they did was fish and it's like things I didn't want to do. You're like, oh, fishing again. Like, first of all, I never (laughs) caught anything in like 10 years. (laughs) I I guess fishing's not my thing. Still trying. Fishing's not my thing. And so, um, you know, so it's like, but I learned that. So my husband, they never really took vacations. Like their family, he's first generation here in the United States. So his family's from Mexico. So they would always go back to Mexico and visit family. That was kind of like their thing, but they didn't consider that vacation or he didn't. So like he didn't actually take vacations till we got together 10 years ago. And then now he's like, I'm really glad that you introduced me to this because like our family looks forward to vacations and so now we do it not even just with our kids but like we do it we extend it and it's with my in-laws my brother-in-law and his wife and their you know soon to be two kids and then my brother my mother-in-law father-in-law and sister-in-law go right so we make it like a whole family thing and we give it to them as a christmas present and i love that the last vacation y'all took y'all um had t-shirts made we did i thought that was the cutest idea ever i don't want to say that one person forgot their t-shirt but they did <laughs> we're not gonna say who. we're not gonna say who it was but it's probably my husband Jesus. i'm just saying if i had to bet on it i would bet a lot of money on that <laughs> Um, I don't understand. And I'm always like, did you, and he hates it because I'm always like, did you remember this? Did you do this? But then that's why, because then things like that happen. So, but you know, it's not the end of the world. He just, it's fine. Didn't get to have his shirt on when he did. I honestly didn't even know in the picture that he He forgot his shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fine. You shouldn't say that. You should be like, it's very noticeable. No. 
Jesus is my boss too. So <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> So that's another thing is like, you know, we have a very good support system. So I would say, I would definitely say take regular vacations because you need to take a time out. And even when we're gone, we're always working, but I can work from my phone. I can work from my laptop or whatever on a cruise. It doesn't matter. I, I can always send emails, but like I have a team of people. So like when we're gone, she's here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, things like that. So then we do that. And then we have a very good support system. Like my in-laws are fantastic. They're local. Uh, they keep our youngest, which allows us to work because the first couple of weeks of this COVID uh, being home stuff mm -hmm. was not working out. Like Silas, every two seconds, he's used to like being the center of attention mm -hmm. and everybody just being there for him. Right. That, that was very hard. And he just kept walking in our office every two seconds. Like, yeah. Oh, and the that? girls had school, so they weren't really paying attention well, to Well, they were transitioning from going from school to online school. And so that was difficult. Yeah. So it's like, there's so many things that just go, I mean, you could get distracted very easily with business and be like, oh, I'm not going to work today. Like, it's mm -hmm. very easy to do that. Yes. So it's important you have these things in place. So my in-laws are a great support system. Um, we have lots of friends and stuff like that that are very, that are also entrepreneurs. So like, they're a great help. But like outsourcing, I would say outsourcing is a huge, huge tip and that you need to do it as much as possible. Can you explain that? So the biggest thing we outsourced was like cleaning our house. So we do okay. not clean our own home. And some people are like, oh, you're high maintenance. It's not that I'm high maintenance. It's just that time is money. I have very little time off and I don't want to spend the time off that I do maintaining anything. Right. I don't even like getting my eyelashes done. Like sitting there for two hours every couple of weeks or whatever or every week. Like I could be doing so many other things like taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> like taking a nap. You can take a nap while you're doing your lashes. I can't though because they talk to me and I feel like I'm being rude because no. I... I walk no. in and I'm like, I'm feeling tired today. I'll see you so in two hours. I'm going to take a nap. But and then they don't talk to me. I, it I may don't be know. rude, but. Well, I'm one of those people like my mind's just going and the whole time I'm thinking like, oh, I could be returning a phone call. Oh my God. And then I can hear my phone going off the entire time. Yeah. And then I have an Apple watch. So it's like, <laughs> and you can't open your eyes. So the whole time I'm thinking like, the whole time I'm playing a guessing game. Was that my husband? Is that one to be mainstream? Is that, oh, I wonder if that's well, so. Well, I'm also not as popular as you, so. Not popular. <laughs> but it's funny. I did, side note. Okay, so I did have to have, uh, so I had a tummy tuck at the end of last year, and I was supposed to also get a breast lift. Um, we're, we're totally going to talk about this, too, on a mm -hmm. podcast one day. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, I didn't get to get the breast lift because I scheduled my surgery so quick because they had a, they had a cancellation, and so it was I was going to have to... I, What's crazy is I was actually supposed to be scheduled to have my tummy tuck like now. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and so I'm glad that I didn't because they suspended all elective surgery up until just now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I already had it back in December. I've been, I'm healed. I'm like good to go. But I didn't, because I scheduled it so fast, I didn't get to get the breast lift because I didn't have a mammogram that was clear because I'm 37 years old and I had never had a mammogram. And so trying to get in to get one was like, I got one and then they didn't have anything to compare it to. So they automatically said, oh, we, would, we oh, think yeah. there could be something we want to have a biopsy. And then that was going to be a couple weeks out. So that was a no go. I didn't get to do it. But uh, so when I did go back to get my biopsy, so I told that story for this, is that I was uh, there and the whole time my watch is going off. So uh -huh. the doctor's in there and she's in there trying to do her procedure, like, you know, sticking with this big long needle and stuff. And, and uh, so she's like, man, you must be really popular. And I go, and she's like, what do you do? And I said, I'm a realtor. I go, I just, you know, I have some transactions going on. So people are trying to get a hold of me. And she started talking to me and she took my card and the next day she called me to show her property. No way. Yes. I did not know that. And not only is she a, a buyer, but she's an investor. So she's going to buy nice. more than one property. And That's we still, awesome. so everything kind of got put on hold for the COVID stuff, but she, she and I email each other back and forth and check on each other and stuff like that. Didn't so, that happen at a nail appointment as well for you? Twice. Yeah. Twice. Uh, both times. Uh, well, two different times I was talking to them and they were like, oh, my wife and I are thinking about buying a house. And uh, and I'm like, oh, hey. And so I started talking to them. I gave them my card and then lo and behold, I mean, there business can really come from anywhere, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, just don't shove it down people's throats and then yeah. they'll probably ask you about it and then they'll be more willing to yeah. use your business. For sure. So I would, so it's just kind of crazy you can get business that way. But, you know, so I think it's important to outsource everything. So we outsource getting your house clean. I outsource my business. I use uh, an assistant. Uh, we have a transaction coordinator that helps us a lot. Um, so with our business, we outsource as much as possible because um, otherwise you just, they say like, even though she makes more than $10 an hour, trust me, but they say like, if you're doing $10 an hour work, you can't do 
the things that actually are like money making activities, like you right. know, prospecting, being in front of clients. And it is true. Like if I'm sitting there having to input stuff into a computer all day, like when am I supposed to show property? Right. Or that stuff's not gonna get done, and it's like you know, it's just then everything just starts piling up, and then you're not really running your business effectively and mm -hmm. efficiently. So we do that. We also outsource our yard. Like we don't do yard. Like I don't even own a lawnmower. I bought a couple. Like my father-in-law mows our yard. We pay him. And I bought him a new lawnmower here recently to far our new yard. Um, but like our HOA actually takes care of the front of our yard, which is great. Yes, that's nice. So he takes care of the back and it's like, I mean, it's literally like three strips. We could go out there and probably like trim it with some scissors just as fast as he could probably do it with his lawnmower. But it's like, that's not the point. The point yeah. is I don't want to touch it. Yeah. I mean, and we outsource our groceries. So for a long time, we actually outsourced our meals. What, with what? So there's a company in local here called Hey What's for Dinner, oh, yeah. and we would uh, outsource our meals like three or four nights a week um, because otherwise if we didn't plan ahead, which I don't with meals because something will come up, I have to go show property or whatever, my husband doesn't cook, so it's like, you know, I'm either here or it's fast food. Um, I don't like fast food, by the way, so, I, and that's another thing is it was a huge expense because we would always order from like, like my kids eat saltgrass steaks like people eat McDonald's. Wow. It's not cheap. <laughs> and then you know and then so it's like so we were constantly eating out at these really expensive restaurants mm -hmm. um, that most people eat out as like a special treat it's like that's a like Tuesday for us and so it gets really expensive <laughs> like very expensive yeah especially when you feed a family at six mm -hmm. so I mean you're looking at you know over a hundred dollars a meal five six nights a week at least sometimes seven and sometimes we eat out every meal that's so it's a like salary right there Oh my God, we did the math. It was over $40,000 a year that we were spending and eating out. That's insane. That is somebody's salary. Yeah. That's, that's about what I made uh, when, I, when I first got into corporate America. When I bought my first house mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I was making like $47,000 a year. Wow. I make that a month now. Yeah. And I know people make a lot more than that. So I'm like, mm -hmm. hashtag goals. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> that's why I work with you. Hashtag <laughs> boss. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So we outsource as much as possible. I would outsource my laundry if my husband would allow it. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? Well, I hate doing laundry. Uh, I do too. So honestly. my husband does the laundry most of the time and I don't know if he's like teaching me a lesson or something, but he hasn't done it since we moved here. Hmm. Maybe we need Jesus to get on and tell us. I don't know. I feel like if he's teaching me a lesson, like I don't like it. Yeah, that's not a good lesson. No, I can't tell you. So up until we moved here, I can't tell you the last time I actually did a load of laundry. Um, so I live by myself and I have She's like, I like two laundry. laundry baskets full that I need to do. Really? That's how much clothes you have? Uh, yeah. See, I don't have that much clothes. I, I, I like significantly cleaned out everything. That's why I worked. want to clean out my closet. So... I don't have like the extra clothes that you wear because everything else is dirty, you know? So it's funny you say that because after we moved here, Jesus decided, so he, so I would just leave him to do everything for Silas. And I mean, like, I love on him. I feed this kid everything he's not supposed to eat. And then I leave everything else up to my husband. Yeah. Changing diapers, <laughs> giving him showers. He like, and this kid will take a shower every day. He does every day. Sometimes a bath and a shower back to back because he's not done. Like, you know, and I'm like, he's the cleanest kid in America. <laughs> but my, so I leave up his laundry to do for my husband. Right. So what my husband decided to do was see how long he could go without doing laundry when we first moved in here. So we, we're like here, what, three or four weeks now, three weeks, something like that. Yeah. And, and for the, I think we're here like four weeks now. Well, my husband just did laundry for the first time, like last week. So it was like, all have that many clothes. So he does. Oh. Not me. Mm -hmm. So he does, and this the thing is that Silas likes to wear his superhero mm -hmm. stuff. So like he is huge on wearing like his Buzz Lightyear pajamas in yes. public, and I I let him because I mean he's the king. He's and the he cutest. Can do whatever he wants. I mean, who's gonna deny him? He's two. Who cares? Yeah. That kid wants fries and ice cream in his Buzz Lightyear outfit, and I'm in the dream making business, and I'm gonna make it happen for him. Like my yeah. husband gets really irritated. He's like, you have got to stop telling him yes. <laughs> and I'm like, what's the point of having like, babies? So no. I'm gonna. He's so. Gonna get he was, he gets really mad. Like he wants to wear certain outfits. He'll tell you like he wants to wear Buzz or he wants to wear Woody or he wants to wear uh, his Spider-Man. He'll go, Phew, Phew. he wants to wear a Spider-Man costume. And it's like full fledged costume, like the built-in abs and the everything. Abs. <laughs> and it's getting kind of snug. So we're trying to get some more costumes in here for him to wear. And I'm totally okay with him wearing mm -hmm. costumes every day, all day. But he, he gets them dirty because he wears them like all day. So he eats his lunch and his 50 meals a day that he eats because he literally eats all day. And then he gets mad because the next day he wants to wear it. And my husband's like, it's in the dirty clothes. And then for three weeks, he didn't wash laundry. 
So he didn't have his costumes. Yeah, it was a sad day, a lot of days. Yeah. And I would tell my husband, like, this is how bad I am. Like, instead of going and washing the clothes, I'm like, you really should wash your clothes. <laughs> like, I don't know when it became, <laughs> like, <laughs> your drawer, but, you know. Like, he does it so good, though. Yeah, so he's, does he, like, separate them and stuff? Because most he guys does. just throw it all in. Okay, and... so he does, and this is what's so funny, is I got irritated at them the other day, because when he did do his laundry... He, there was still plenty of space in the washing machine for more clothes because our new washer and dryer is like super capacity. And it was only like halfway full because he said that's how he does his laundry and I just need to let him do what he does. Well, I mean, I'm not going to compete. I'm not going to like get mad at him for that. But I was like, that doesn't make any, but you know, I'm going to argue with him, argue with me. <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But he's like, no, um, I, I do it this way. Don't worry about it. Like I got this under control. He's like, you want me to do the laundry? I'm going to do it my way. And he did. So he only wanted certain shirts and the laundry. Okay. Like not all the shirts, just certain shirts. Like he washes them in batches. Like it was shirts and like underwear. Okay. So I'm more like a guy when it comes to doing laundry. You put everything in. I don't care what it is. It's going in. You don't separate your whites or anything? No. <laughs> Interesting. I had to separate my whites because I I really like my whites white. Yeah. So I, I mean, it depends it. what fabric it is, but if I've had it for a long time and I don't really care about it, it's going in. It so if you've had it for a while, then it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Because chances are I'm not going to wear it anytime soon again. So. Well, maybe you have as much clothes as you do, it seems, then you yeah. probably go to last I year. really need to go through my stuff and just donate it. Yeah. I bet she has some cute stuff too. Mm -hmm. So like another thing that we do is another, so we outsource everything. If I can find any other way to outsource anything, I'm going to like, um, we outsource our groceries. Like we, I can't, well, even before this, we were not going to the grocery store. Like we would order everything online either have it delivered or for pickup. Yeah. That's honestly the way to do it. Even me living by myself, I do that. I think that you save more money that way. You stay more on budget because like what we'll do is we'll sit down and say, okay, this is what we're going to be having for dinner this week. Cause mm -hmm. now I kind of cook. And so it's like, these are the things I'm going to need. And I just order that and then that's it. Yes. And then snacks for the kids or whatever. And so I'll ask, you know, what does everybody need? And then they tell me and then we put it on the list and then we pick it up. Even though I do love grocery shopping. Do you? Yes. I love it. It's like therapeutic for me. I'll be in the grocery store for like aware. hours. Like a really nice grocery store. Like I will find myself avoiding. There used to be a Kroger in Louisville. Sorry for those mm -hmm. people who from Louisville. But Kroger on 121, I hated going there. It always smelled. Now it's our church. They turned it into a church. But um, there's like certain grocery <laughs> oh, stores yeah. like I don't. Yeah. Right? Bless me the fruit. <laughs> oh my God. If you do not watch Handmaid's Tale, you need to be doing yourself a favor right now and watching it and catching up before the new season comes out. Um, while you're quarantined, but, um, there's some places I won't go like, and I don't shop at Target for some reason, like Target doesn't seem like the grocery store for me, but like a really nice Kroger. Like we have one that's across the street mm -hmm. from my neighborhood here. It's a great Kroger. So I go to Albertsons. Where is there even an Albertsons at? Uh, off of Teasley, I think it's like five minutes from my apartment. I thought it was a Kroger. No, it's Albertsons. Is that the Kroger that you're talking about or no? no? That's a nice Kroger too. Oh, okay. Like now the Kroger's have like a jewelry store. What? Have you been to a Kroger where they have a jewelry store and like you walk in and it's like they have clothes and like all kinds of stuff. <gasps> yes. That's There's how this one, one in Prosper like that. That's how this one mm -hmm. is. There's one in Keller that has a jewelry store. Now I could I don't know spend... about buying jewelry from Kroger. I don't know, but I would look at it. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have a coupon? <laughs> like check like, it out. Here's my coupon. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's like buying jewelry from Sam's. I just don't feel right about it. I can't. I just don't feel right about it. I have. So a Kroger like that, I did buy a pajama set from. Really? Yeah. This is interesting. I feel like we should do a video when they open back up. Like, well, I mean, they're open now, but like, I don't want to be walking in like touching stuff. But yeah. It's like, I feel like we should do like a haul. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. There's no time that we could buy it in the Kroger. Let's go on a shopping spree and then we'll show everything that we bought. From Kroger's. Give Kroger's with an S. Kroger's. <laughs> My grandmother in Arkansas still calls Walmart at Walmarts. Yes. I think all grandmas do. And we I think do. that's a thing that they do. And now we say it like that just because we made fun of her so long. Like that's really how we talk now. It's Walmarts. Yes. <laughs> so we outsource those kinds of things. And then another thing is, is we... Like, so when I first got into real estate, I wanted to learn how to change my business from a buyer's based business to a listing based business. And so I was challenged by our, uh, the head of our coaching um, for real estate to do a hundred listing appointment challenge in like three months, which is 
a lot of work. It's really hard, but it completely changed my business and it changed my life because it made my business what it is today for sure. Just, I have so much momentum from that. And so what I learned was I was working not like nonstop 24 seven and my kids were never seeing me. And then my coach said, maybe you should get your kids involved. So like what we do now is our goals become our ki our kids goals. Like we involve them. Like one, because it's account it's accountability. We've talked about that. Like our kids, nothing will hold you more accountable than telling your children. Mm -hmm. But we also talked about that last podcast. Yeah. Cause your kids tell everybody they know everything anyways. But if you, if you tell them, Hey, listen, like I'm not going to eat pizza for a month and you go to order pizza on a Tuesday, your kids are gonna be like, you said you weren't gonna eat pizza. And then it's like, oh, well, mm -hmm. I didn't realize you were actually gonna remember. Mm -hmm. They remember everything, by the way. Yeah. Good, bad, and different. But if it's bad, they're really gonna remember it. <laughs> and if they have a way to tell you like you that you messed up, like they're gonna shove it in your face as much as possible. So mm -hmm. tell your kids. <laughs> if you really wanna make sure you don't do something, tell your kids. But then also like, if you have goals, like for us, we have goals, we sit down as a team, and then we also have uh, goals like individually, like for our marriage and for our finances personally. Um, and so what we do is we sit down and we tell the girls, okay, these are what we're gonna do. We involve them because when they see that you're working so hard, no longer are they ups like upset about you working. They ask you like, okay, how many transactions did you get today? Or did you get a signed contract? Or how many listings did you get today? Mm -hmm. Like I know when I did it with the 100 listing appointment challenge, it was like, once I get to the end of that, I wanted to reward them with it. I said, hey, listen, when I get through with this, I'm gonna work, it's gonna be a reward for the whole family because there's a lot of sacrifice made by everybody to make that happen. And so it became every day like, hey, how many listing appointments did you go on today? Like what That's number? Awesome. what number are you on now? Like then it became like an exciting, positive thing in the house. Right. And I think like by doing that, you teach your kids, like even as an adult being, you know, I'll be 40 in a couple of years, like having goals is important. Right. And then it teaches them like to have ambition and to write down what they want and come up with a plan. Like it's one thing to write everything down, but it's another to actually come up with a plan and execute it. Mm -hmm. And they realize like the work it actually goes into going from point A to point B. Right. And so for us, like we involve our kids. And so it's like, they know that if, if I do what I'm supposed to do, they're going to get rewarded with an extra trip or, you know, like whatever we're going to do, they're mm -hmm. going to get rewarded for it. And then it becomes like a positive thing in the family, something for us to discuss and talk about. Yeah. And it's extra support because they're supporting you and doing it. Yeah. So you've owned a business before mm -hmm. and like completely from scratch, right? And kind of out of left field. Like you, did you wake up when, did you have this ambition to own a snow cone stand or? Like uh, no. So we talked about it literally maybe for like 30 minutes, just a topic to talk, talk about. And then the next day he pulls up with a, a snow, cone stand. snow cone stand that we have to fully redo. Wow. Next, so that was my project for like six months. And then we opened it that summer it was a lot of work, way more than I ever expected. Oh, looking the outside looking in, everything looks easy. Yeah. But then now you know why after you mm -hmm. did that and you work with us and you see how things are like, now you know why this is not for everybody. Right. Owning yes. a business is not for everybody. It's not. There are some people out there that, and I am all about supporting everybody in whatever they mm -hmm. choose to do. Like it's not for everybody. It's okay if you want to work for somebody else. It's okay if you want to get paid per hour or whatever right. and have that stability. Totally understand. Yeah. Some people like when someone is telling them kind of what to do and they have like steps to follow if that makes sense well, it's like no responsibility and no pressure right like mm -hmm. you show up every day you're gonna get paid right mm -hmm. but owning your own business is not like that at all no. if you don't show up and if you don't do your job then it goes to crap yeah you, you no longer have a business yeah and you may not have a house <laughs> or yeah. a car or mm -hmm. yes money so bank I did the snow cone stand um, all of that summer how lucrative are snow cone stands? Like the margins for markup are amazing, right? Yes. Super so, cheap ingredients, but like sell it for like almost a premium price. Like I'm going like Shark Tank here. Okay, so um, like numbers wise, we made our- It was a good day for you. Um, or do y'all do it that way? Well, okay, so the first month we made all of our money back. That you've invested. That we invested. So you were like cash flow positive after the first month. Yes. That's a huge deal in business. Huge. Yes. Because some people go years without being cash flow positive. Yes. So yeah. that that's what kind of kept us going all summer because I was like, whatever we make, it's, Just, like, it's we profit. can either put it back into the business or it's profit. Yeah. 
So, I mean, of course, you have, like, the utensils and stuff that you have to buy each time that you Supplies, run out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um... You have to spend money to make money in any business. Right. Yeah. For the most part, I mean, just for a snow coat stand, I think I had to, like, count all the money. And afterwards, like, I would profit at least, like, seven to nine hundred dollars a day just for a snow cone stand wow and we were only open from like noon to seven or eight whenever it got dark depending on that mm -hmm. and that that was huge so eight hours i would profit eight so you're making dollars you're making like a hundred dollars an hour right she was like making like lawyer status money right but then, because I was a full-time student at the time, so when school started back up, I had to hire Somebody else. high school students to help me run it. And that was another thing. I had to do all the scheduling. I had to do QuickBooks. I had to literally do it all and yeah. keep up with payroll and stuff like that. So after that, I mean, we profited a little less because yeah. we had to pay. Yeah. But since so. they were high school students, they were working for like eight to nine dollars an hour yeah. and they were excited about the eight to nine but what is it about high school kids who love working at snow cone stands like bahama bucks every single bahama bucks i've ever been to is just a bunch of high school kids i think it's because they can like invite their friends because Maybe, that's yeah. what our high schoolers that we hired they would do they would just like call their friends and then their friends would like hang out with them for a little bit and i would always tell them that they could do that but as long as like a customer walked up, they had to do the job. So it's very important. So what I get from you and just from our business, like trying to find a way that they're the same, is that it, it's the constant, is hiring people gives you more freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. So like it's important that you, if you run a business, that you do whatever business it is, you have to make sure that it's scalable, one, and two, that you're not the center of it. So something that I learned was my business was growing, like fantastic mm -hmm. but I could not step out of it and it still go by itself and that's what they like it's not it does not sustain itself without me being in the center of it so that's how I know that I still have changes to make in my business and I have made some changes to adjust with that but I want to be able to go on vacation for a week or be in the middle of on a cruise somewhere in the middle of nowhere for a week where you don't have internet access and I don't come back and my business is gone right so like it's important that you outsource Mm -hmm. and that you get people who can help you or you're never going to be able to be as successful as you want without you working 24-7 and having zero life balance. Right, which is another reason why we hired people because it was the summer for us and we wanted to go on a trip or something. So we had yeah. to outsource our business. Yeah, and it's worth it. So, And a lot of times, like even with us, so like we look at it from, I mean, everything comes down to dollars and cents. I mean, if you track and measure, there's a number with everything. Just like she could probably tell you how much it costs to make a snow cone and then how much mm -hmm. money they sell it for so that she could tell you the profit and all that. But it's like, for us, every agent we bring on our team brings a certain amount of revenue to it. And then it allows me to say, okay, listen, if I want to make a certain amount every year, like that means that I can actually step aside from my business, do less transactions and make more money. Right. Which gives me time mm -hmm. to do whatever it is with that time. Right. Whether it be, you know, with our family, with just hanging out, whatever, um, going on right. trips. But like when you have a young kid, it's really hard because they need a lot of attention. Like Silas, he's he's a great kid to have for real estate mm -hmm. because he'll go with us. Um, he goes with my husband all the time to put out signs, lock boxes and stuff. But what we started doing was we des we we dedicated a day for him. So like, especially when the girls were in school. So on Fridays, it was Silas Fridays, and I would always go get donuts, and we'd have donut dates. Now I have donut, donuts delivered, and he gets his dough wet um, <laughs> as much as he wants, but um, we would dedicate that Friday for him. So even if I worked, I would just tell people ahead of time, hey, listen, like if you need me on a Friday, that's fine, but he's coming with me. Right. And that would be the way that my husband and I and Silas would ever spend any time together, and then mm -hmm. we would pick up the girls from school, and then we would spend you know the Friday evening together or whatever. Right. I try to take Fridays off, but it's really hard. So I would say you definitely need to make sure that you have a good schedule and that you learn to keep it. Like if it's not on my schedule, it doesn't exist. You can ask right. her. Like mm -hmm. even my family time, obligations, anything like going to my in-laws yesterday for dinner, it was in my calendar. Like, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be this time at this time. If I have a Zoom call, a phone call, anything like that scheduled, it's in my calendar. Even if it's for five, ten minutes, it's in there. It has to be in there because otherwise, it's also like my to-do list, even though I have a separate to-do list for things I need to do. But otherwise, like your day will get away from you. And then at the end of the day, that's what we did at the very mm -hmm. beginning was I was working, 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 and doing nothing. Right. 
Mm -hmm. Because the difference between being busy and being productive. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. So the more that you can put the stuff that's not productive work to somebody else or outsourcing it, the more you're doing the productive activities, the more your business is going to keep going and the more successful you're going to be. Because going back to the beginning of what I, we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, this one is that 87% of businesses fail in the first year. So if you've made it past that first five-year mark, kudos to you for one, because it's, obviously everybody can't do it. Only 13% of businesses actually are sustainable um, and that you know they're successful so uh, luckily we're past the five-year mark um, so I'm, I'm happy to report that we're still here <laughs> and our business is continuing to grow um, so you know that's just this has just been on my mind because we're just working all the time and it's like you look up and even today it's like I looked up and I'm like oh I'm five minutes behind I was supposed to be on a call already or you know like whatever yeah so these are just kind of some of the things that I have found that work yes. running a business and having kids and having a family I mean, at the end of the day, this is your business. It's your baby. And whether mm -hmm. you succeed or you don't, it's ultimately up to me. Yes. So, and you can't be scared of changes because no. everything changes day to day. So you definitely have to be willing to make adjustments. Yes. Because times are changing. Like the way we did our business before, it was like we're no longer being able to do things in person. So what are you going to do? You have to pivot. And you have to be able to do it like that because if you wait, you're going to be behind. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know some people who are just taking time off during this time right now. And it's like we've been busy. Like we've just yeah. put two listings on the market this week. We had two closings already this week. We have a closing next week. It's like we have a closing almost every single week since this started with other people saying, I know that I talked to people on the phone and they're working with another agent. And then they're saying, well, my agent's saying that they're not working right now because they're quarantined. And it's like mm, we're deemed essential. So it's completely mm -hmm. up to you. But I, I, I'm not going to sit back and let and just take – two months off. Like I can't. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be devastating to my business. Like people who are doing that will struggle for the rest of the year and maybe not even be able to recover at all. Right. So outsource your stuff, get your family on board, have a good support staff, have a good support team, mm -hmm. surround yourself with people who are more intelligent than you. Um, and then another thing is just give yourself some grace. <laughs> Yes. Um, just do the best you can and then that's all you can do. So, I right. mean, and if it's not working, just be able to be self-aware, mm -hmm. make changes as you need to, and just, you know, keep slaying it. Yes. This episode of the Slaying It with Shauna podcast has ended. Don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. Keep slaying it.